You guys have asked, it is time for the showdown tier list. Normally get a bunch of pros together to try and create the most accurate tier list for the competitive meta as possible. But showdown, it's not exactly competitive after a certain trophy range. If you know, you know. So this is my opinion on every brawler's tier list placement for solo showdown and duo showdown. Two tier lists at once. This is what you guys subscribe for. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We're going to start with Shelly. She's getting an A tier for solo showdown and the C tier for duo showdown. If you're wanting to hide in bushes and surprise enemies, then Shelly is your brawler to do that, right? She doesn't even have to be that close to unsuspecting enemies thanks to her clay pigeon's gadget, but surprise attacks don't work so well in duo showdown, which is why she's lower in that mode. Next, we have Nita, who is in the C tier for solo showdown and the B tier for duo showdown. Nita kind of struggles a little bit in solo showdown because her range doesn't reach that far, but she is a little bit better in duo showdown since she can hit multiple targets with her attack, which makes it a little bit easier for her to get closer to enemies. Next is Colt, who's in the B tier for solo showdown and duo showdown. Colt's attacks are a little tricky to land, but he has the range and the damage output to be a decent showdown brawler. Whether he's in solo or duo showdown doesn't really make that much of a difference, so he goes in B tier for both. Bull is in the B tier for solo showdown and D tier for duo showdown. He's really good at opening boxes quickly, and his stomper gadget's actually really good for 1v1s. His abilities are significantly worse when he's playing against teammates, so he's pretty good in solo showdown, but in duo showdown, his abilities are not nearly as good because he's usually facing off against two players at once instead of just one. Jesse is in the F tier for solo showdown, and she's better. She's, she's in the C tier for duo showdown. <laughs> I think this is obvious because Jesse's attacks actually bounce off of enemies and are more likely to actually deal damage in duo showdown, but otherwise she really struggles in showdown. Her turret doesn't help her that often in 1v1s unless people just are, are not paying attention, and she takes a while to open up boxes. We've got more to cover, but first... I wanted to give a big thank you to Blizzard for sponsoring this video. Diablo Immortal is an online multiplayer RPG where you can fight demons and all other kinds of monsters to prevent them from taking over the world. Click the link in the description below to download and play for free. The game recently got a major update called Forgotten Nightmares and it added tons of stuff to the storyline, including the Silent Monastery dungeon. This new dungeon becomes available after you reach level 60, which is great for players like myself who've played the game a lot. In fact, I've already beaten the campaign completely free to play up until this point, so I'm really excited to try this out. They also came out with a really awesome new update for warbands, including the new Castle Syringar. You can explore the castle alone or with up to seven other members of your warband, and you basically go and purge the Castle Syringar of demons, and then you and your warband basically get to take over and live in the castle. Each room offers different bonuses to each warband member that occupies them, and you can also upgrade the rooms with remnants which you can find throughout the castle. Once you've taken over the castle and made it your own, you can compete in in the defense of Syringar, where you defend the castle from waves of demons that are trying to overtake it. You can play standard mode once a week to get awesome rewards while surviving eight waves of demons, but in endless mode, the demons never stop coming and your goal is to survive for as long as possible so that your warband can hopefully be posted high on the leaderboards. This update added a ton of new content to the game, so now's a great time to try it out, which is why you're going to want to click that link in the description below and start leveling up so you can experience it. And once again, a huge thank you to Blizzard for sponsoring this video. I I've played Diablo Immortal a lot, and it's a lot of fun to play. Brock is in the B tier for Solo Showdown, and A tier for Duo Showdown. There aren't a lot of brawlers that outrange Brock, and his Rocket Laces gadget is a great tool in case of like surprise attacks or emergencies and stuff like that. When it comes to Duo Showdown, he's more likely to be able to hit multiple targets with his rockets, and I know that it's slim that that can happen, but when he has his super, it's much more likely that he can make that work out. Next is Dynamite, who's in the C tier for Solo Showdown, and D tier for Duo Showdown. If I'm being completely honest, I would have liked to put Dynamite lower on this tier list. However, there's just one situation where he's just ridiculously strong, and that is with his satchel charge gadget charged up. If he's in a bush and hidden, and he's able to get that off, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill every single time. It's more reliable in solo showdown, which is why he gets C in solo and D for duo. Next is Bo, who's going in the B tier for solo showdown and A tier for duos. Honestly, Bo's stats are good enough for him to hold his own all by himself, but he's better in duos because both his star powers and his super totem are more useful with teammates. Next is Tick, who's in the D tier for solo showdown and the C tier for duos. Now you guys know that Tick's attacks spread out, they have a little blast radius, and they are effective on multiple enemies, but he's also really fragile and it's just better for him to have a teammate to hide behind like honestly sometimes he'll auto aim his attack on a box and it won't even hit the box at all. Like, it, it's like, Tick's not that good. A Pit's in the D tier for solo showdown and the C tier for duo showdown. His slow movement speed makes him a really easy target and it just makes it impossible to get him out of tight situations. But he's a little bit better in duo showdown because his super gets better with teammates. Next is Ems, who's in the A tier for solo showdown and the A tier for duo showdown as well. She's possibly a little bit better in duo showdown since her main attack and super are able to target multiple enemies at times 
but even in solo showdown, her super slows down enemies, which makes her really good in 1v1 situations. Plus, she has her gadgets. Uh, well, really, her, her knockback gadget is like, just it's it's really good for protecting herself in scary situations. Next is Stu in the S tier for solo showdown and the A tier for duos. Stu is one of the best brawlers you want to have on your team in a 1v1 situation because of how well he can dodge attacks and stay within range to hit the enemy. Not only is his super good offensively, but it also makes it very hard for a surprise attack on him because he can just use it to run away from them. He struggles a little bit more in duo showdown than solo showdown, but he's still really good. El Primo's in the B tier for solo showdown and in the D tier for duo showdown. El Primo has a really good time against most enemies when they are alone because of how easy it is for him to get close to them with his super. But when an enemy has a teammate close by, it's a little bit more risky for him to jump on them, which is exactly why he's a little bit higher in, in solo showdown than duo showdown. But even then, he's still not amazing in solo showdown. Next is Barley, who is in the D tier for solo showdown and the C tier for duos. Barley doesn't really have anything to help him sneak up on an enemy, and he doesn't have really good burst damage to assassinate enemies. He does have his gadget, which can catch people off guard, but most of the time, it's it's not too hard to play around if you're just thinking about Barley's gadget. He's a little bit better in duo showdown because his attacks cover large areas, so he can deal more damage to enemies, and he has a teammate close by to him to kind of protect him if uh, an assassin tries to jump in on him or something like that. Next is Poco, who I'm actually putting in the A tier for solo showdown, and he's in the S tier for duo showdown. This might come as a surprise because you don't typically think of Poco as like just really good at like breaking boxes and stuff like that, and he, he's not, but he's such a good brawler right now, and in duo showdown, he's he has a teammate that can help support him, which actually helps him take advantage of all of his awesome benefits. His attack deals a lot more damage than it used to, and his super just keeps him alive forever. He might not be the best at getting number one in solo showdown, however, He's incredibly good at surviving and lasting up until being number two, which is, I feel like justifies the A tier position for solos. Next is Rosa, who's in the B tier for solo showdown and the B tier for duos as well. Now some showdown maps have tons of bushes and on those maps, Rosa's one of the best brawlers to play because I mean, she's just so good. But I wouldn't play her on other maps and it's a little bit more difficult for her to take on two enemy brawlers at the same time, but her super can block a lot of damage for her teammates. So it kind of evens things out and she has her gadget, which reveals all all enemies within the bush, so that's really awesome. She gets B tier for both of them. And Rico gets C tier for both solos and duos. He's got some decent range. His burst damage does struggle a little bit, and he doesn't have abilities that help him like escape type situations. But on Cavern Churn, <laughs> this map alone, he he could be the single best brawler in the game, at least early game before everybody's forced to go into the center. Other than that, though, he's just average, so C tier seems to make sense for both of them. Daryl gets B tier for solos and C tier for duos. Despite having a short range, Daryl is actually pretty good in solo showdown because of how well he can just automatically charge up his super and roll in onto somebody and assassinate them. This is less useful in duo showdown where rolling onto somebody usually means you're going to be dealing with them and their teammate as well, so keep that in mind. Now Penny gets C tier for solo showdown and the B tier for duos. She's much better in duos because her attack will actually shred through a whole team if they're standing close to each other, and she's still kind of decent by herself thanks to her salty barrel gadget, so she's like not awful, but you know, I'd, I'd rather have somebody else if uh, that makes sense. Carl is in the S tier for solo showdown and in duo showdown. He's the first to be S tier in both. He is just made for showdown. His attacks have great range. His super has high burst damage and he gets increased movement speed. Plus his flying hook gadget allows him to like escape on duo showdown or like assassinate on solo showdown. Like he's, he's insane. Okay. Like showdown. Oh, Carl, Carl. Jackie's at the bottom of the C tier for solo showdown and she is in the F tier for duo showdown. She can't really do anything unless she's able to sneak up on enemies and that just doesn't work at least not in duo showdown. She does handle things pretty well by herself on maps with lots of bushes and lots of walls, but other than that, she's just an easy target. Gus is a D tier brawler in solo showdown and a B tier brawler in duo showdown. Now I'm gonna be honest, I played Gus from one to 500 trophies without upgrading him at all in solo showdown and he felt awful, but most brawlers feel awful at, at uh, power one. So I tried to be a little bit fair and not put him in the F tier and you know give him the, the, B, the D tier at least. Either way, he's not good in solo showdown. Duo showdown, he's a support brawler, so he's a little bit better. He can help his teammates. He can shield himself, shield his teammate. It allows him to be really good in a 2v1 situation. Plus, he can keep his teammates alive, which is really awesome. 
Piper's going in the C tier for solo showdown and the B tier for duos. Solos is more about assassins and jumping on to long range brawlers, whereas duos is more about that long range fight. Piper does have a few abilities that keeps enemies away from her, but they're not always very reliable and her gadget, it only works three times. So I feel like this is pretty fair for her. Pam is in the S tier for solo showdown and for duo showdown, along with Poco. What are these healers doing here? She honestly has, she's, she's really great, okay? She has everything you need in showdown. Her attack damage allows her to shred through boxes and open up them, them quickly. Her health keeps her alive. Her super keeps her alive. Her scrap sucker gadget just prevents enemies from surprising her. It's one of the best gadgets in the game for a close range 1v1 fight. She is amazing. Uh, I feel like S tier for both of these just makes sense for her. Frank's in the C tier for solo showdown and the C tier for duo showdown. He's got some good burst damage with his gadget, but he has a really hard time catching enemies within his range. His insane amount of health does help keep him alive. It makes it difficult for enemies to really take him out. Like a Frank could just go like run away from everybody the entire match and probably stay alive pretty well, but he's not going to deal damage. He's going to struggle to get number one. So I feel like C tier for both works for him. BB goes in the B tier for solo showdown and she goes in the C tier for duos. She's kind of similar to Frank since she has a good amount of health and like a short range, but also like a fair amount of speed with the right star power. And that helps her dodge attacks and get close to enemies. Good at surviving, not the best at killing, but you know, it works. B is in the A tier for solo showdown and for duo showdown. It does take longer than a lot of the A tier brawlers to open up boxes, but she can deal so much damage in 1v1 fights, whether they're close range or not. Her super can easily hit more than one target, so she's not that much worse in duo showdown. She has the range to handle duo showdown, and she has the burst potential to just shred people in solo showdown if they're not paying attention. Nani? Nani's in the C tier for solo showdown and for duo showdown. Nani's attack does have really great range, and her super can literally take out an enemy from anywhere on the whole map. It's a little bit more scary to do, in, especially in solo showdown, though, because you gotta leave um, Nani kind of vulnerable to do so. On top of that, her attacks are pretty difficult to land even in close range situations it's more likely that somebody's gonna be able to take her out because she's so fragile which is why c tier makes sense for both game modes edgar gets near the bottom of the s tier for solo showdown but he only gets c tier for duos okay solo showdown is pretty much the only game mode that edgar is like actually great in like competitively you know he opens up boxes really quickly he can just sit in a bush until a super is charged then jump on anybody to like you know, like <laughs> it's honestly kind of unfair plus he has his gadget he pops his gadget and like either gadget is just so insane in those types of situations. Both star powers are really good. S tier is definitely just fights for solo, for solo showdown, but duo showdown, please don't play Edgar. You'll jump on somebody and their teammate will come and just kill you. Like that's just what happens every time. Griff goes in the A tier for solo showdown and for duo showdown. He's not the best like showdown brawler, but he's still one of the best brawlers in the game overall. He might be a little bit better in duos because his attacks are wide enough and you should be able to hit more enemies more at a time, you know, but uh, A tier, just just because he's super solid right now. Grom is an F tier brawler in solos and and only slightly better in duos where he's in the D tier. Grom's attacks are very easy to dodge at close range, even long range, right? It's a, he has he has no abilities to escape. He's just a little bit better in duo showdown because like his attacks can go through with targets and he has a teammate to kind of help enemies away from him. Like if somebody jumps on him, then his teammate can help. He's just not very good in showdown because there's so much space for enemies to try and dodge his attacks. Next is Bonnie, who's in the S tier for solo showdown and the A tier for duo showdown. Now Bonnie can take a little while to break open boxes and charge her super at the start, but once her super is charged, she can assassinate almost any brawler that she wants to, even if they're way far away. Plus, all she has to do to get back into her cannon form and actually have some range is just sit in a bush, which usually is pretty beneficial to do in showdown. For duo showdown, she struggles a little bit more because jumping onto enemy targets is a little bit more risky, but she's still pretty solid. Mortis is in the C tier for solo showdown and the D tier for duo showdown. The thing is with Mortis is he can get pretty far by just avoiding everybody. And there are a few brawlers that he can assassinate easily, but brawlers like Shelly, Stu, there's a lot of brawlers he's useless against that are pretty good in solo showdown. So he gets, or in showdown in general. So he gets C tier for solos where he's a little bit better and D tier for duos. Tara's at the bottom of the B tier for solo showdown and she's close to the top for duo showdown. She takes a long time to charge her super, but she has a lot of burst damage at close range. So she actually usually lasts long enough to get at least one super, which can be pretty impactful. Her super is basically a guaranteed kill in that type of situation if you're able to actually pull somebody 
which is why she's not awful in either ones. And in Duo Showdown, sometimes you can get both enemies, which is awesome. Jean is an A tier brawler for Solo Showdown and an S tier brawler for Duo Showdown. <laughs> he was basically built specifically for Duo Showdown. His star power heals his teammate. His super just like, like you pull any one individual brawler on the enemy team. It doesn't matter which one. Both you and your teammate can focus your attacks on them. It's almost guaranteed kill. Plus there's like almost no way for them to avoid it. I mean, as long as you actually hit your shot. But his gadget prevents like surprise attacks like that, which is also why he's kind of decent in Solo Showdown as well. Max is a B tier brawler for Solo Showdown and an A tier brawler for Duo Showdown. She's actually a pretty decent brawler by herself, but her super can affect her teammates. So Duos is just better for her. She's actually really good at dealing a lot of damage for how much range she has. And her face sifter gadget actually comes in handy for getting out of a lot of sketchy situations. Is she the best? No, but she's actually pretty reliable and worth playing. Mr. P is a B tier brawler for Solo Showdown and for Duo Showdown as well. His porters are really great for tracking down enemies no matter how far away they are, and his attacks are, well, he really struggles against assassins, but he does pretty good against most other brawlers. Since he does get countered by a lot of brawlers in Showdown, then uh, B tier seems to be good for him, even though he's pretty consistent. Sprout's in the F tier for Solo Showdown, and the F tier for Duos as well. Double F. Oh, that's that's rough. Sprout just can't do anything if an enemy gets next to Sprout, and it's pretty tough to hit your shots, even in wide open areas. Its super can be really good to push enemies away, but only if it's aimed absolutely perfectly, and it's just not very reliable. I just, uh, the Sprout's not good for Showdown. Byron is in the F tier for Solo Showdown and makes a huge jump in duos where he's A tier. His healing ability from his main attack is just useless in Solo Showdown since he has nobody that he can heal and he does damage over time and it's not even that much damage, which makes it very difficult for him to take out enemies. He's actually pretty good at taking out boxes though. However, in Duo Showdown, the heals, they, they can be insanely good because it makes it so hard for enemies to actually destroy your teammate. Squeak gets D tier for solos and C tier for for duos. The thing with Squeak is that Squeak can deal a lot of damage, but it takes a little bit of time, and in that time, enemies can kill you, and that happens a lot in solos. So, at, even in duos, not very good, but he is a little bit better in Duo Showdown because it's more likely to actually be able to hit multiple enemies with his attack, because you'll attack one, and he'll move over to his teammate, and both of them will take damage. So, D tier for solos and C for duos kind of makes sense. Spike is in the A tier for solo showdown and for duo showdown as well. He's got good range and some decent area control with just his regular attack. Plus his super is amazing at preventing enemies from going specific ways. It slows them down. He has high DPS. His super it makes it almost impossible to get close to him. A tier is just really solid. Crow's in the A tier for solo showdown and for duo showdown. His slowing toxin gadget can be useful for kills or to escape. His super can be useful for both kills and for escaping and so that makes it really hard to kill Crow and easy for kill for Crow to kill you when the situation calls for it. A tier seems solid for both modes. Leon is in the S tier for Solo Showdown and the B tier for Duo Showdown. His super is basically a free kill to anybody that he can three shot and that's a lot of brawlers. Plus he can take out boxes very quickly and his super is also really good in Duo Showdown as well because it's not hard for him to charge it up multiple times in the game. There's almost nothing you can do against a Leon with his super charge up, especially paired up with his star power because he can heal so much. And honestly, Leon could be the best brawler in Solo Showdown. Sandy is in the D tier for Solo Showdown and the B tier for Duo Showdown. Sandy doesn't have very good range, which is why he's lower in Solo Showdown. But in Duo Showdown, his attack, his super, even his sleepy time gadget can hit more than one enemy at a time. And honestly, his super can be useful, although it's not charged very often, which is why he's not that amazing. Amber's in the B tier for Solo Showdown and for Duo Showdown. Amber has pretty decent range, pretty decent damage output for both solo and duo showdown. Her burst potential is really low. However, she can take out multiple boxes or multiple enemies at the same time. So something to consider, just not that amazing because she does struggle in the burst damage and it's pretty easy for enemies to run away as long as there's like one wall in there. <laughs> Meg's in the bottom of the F tier for solo showdown and the bottom of the F tier for duo showdown. It takes Meg forever to open up boxes. And it's not very easy for her to charge her super either. When she does get her mecha, even then, she can't sit around waiting for brawlers to move close to her since her health is always decaying, right? So she's forced to play aggressively with it, which usually means that she then gets her mecha's HP taken out because enemies will actually hit her. And she's, she's just not very good for either mode. Gale is an S tier brawler for solo showdown and for duo showdown. It's pretty much impossible to get anywhere near Gale, even 
if you were hiding in a bush trying to surprise him. His attacks have enough range and width that there's not a big difference between him playing solo or duo showdown. He can blow you into the smoke. If two boxes are next to each other, he can open them both like at the same time with his attack. Plus you have his gadgets, which are both just cheesy and fun and annoying to face. Surge is near the top of the S tier for solo showdown and is in the A tier for duos. He's got really good burst damage. His super is just insanely good. He can jump on people. His power shield gadget, it, I mean, it's really hard to take him out in solo showdown and it's very easy for him to like, if he gets his super charged once, maybe even twice, it's really hard to kill him in duo sh or in solo showdown. And in duo showdown, he's not quite as good, but still, especially because he's more likely that he'll actually die and lose his power or his upgrades, but uh, still pretty solid. Colette's in a D tier for solo showdown and for duo showdown. She's got a really hard time taking out brawlers by herself because of the way that her attacks actually deal damage. And it is a little bit easier for her to kill brawlers with the help of a teammate, but she usually takes more damage using her super in duo showdown. So I don't think I can justify higher than D tier for her in either mode. Losing the C tier for solos and for duos. His hypothermia star power is actually pretty good against assassins because it lowers their burst damage a lot, but some brawlers can escape his super very easily. But if they can't, it's usually a free kill, but it's, it's it lose hard. He's tricky. His attacks are hard to hit. It's hard to deal a lot of damage with them. Rust is in the D tier for solo showdown and the B tier for duo showdown. He's a support brawler. He's not very good by himself. Fortunately, he can pick up his own power ups, but it does take a while for him to charge his super. And even then he's still pretty average after he gets it. Bell's in the B tier for solo showdown and the A tier for duo showdown. She's better in duos mostly because her attack is more likely to bounce between enemies. And in solo, she can't really prevent burst damage, but her super does deal a lot to tanks. But in duo showdown, she has a teammate that can help uh, prevent that burst damage. So she's uh, yeah, solid in duos. Buzz is in the A tier for solo showdown and in the B tier for duo showdown. His super makes him really good at assassinating people in solo showdown. Plus he has his gadget so that he can pick and choose if an enemy is actually worth jumping onto without the stun. His super doesn't work as well in duos though because you can only latch onto one target. But if you're close enough and you stun them and their teammate, then that actually works out really great. Buzz is in the B tier for solo showdown and C tier for duo showdown. He's got a much better chance of getting his rage bar full in a 1v1 instead of a 2v2. And his super is a lot harder to deal with for a single brawler than it is for a team of two brawlers, which is why he's higher in solo showdown. But still not amazing because his range is kind of short. Lola's in the B tier for solo showdown and for duo showdown. Her attack's pretty basic and it's just as good against one brawler as it is against two brawlers. Her freeze frame gadget might be a little bit better in solo showdown, but not by much. She's just, you know, pretty average. She does have a lot of DPS though, so keep that in mind. If you can ramp up your damage with her, she's pretty solid, but otherwise I'd, st I'd stick to B tier. Faze in the A tier for solo showdown and in the B tier for duos. Both his super and his roundhouse kit gadget are just really good at abilities for assassinating isolated brawlers. Both of these abilities are usually less effective in 2v2s, although they can work, but Fang's regular attack can only hit one brawler at a time, which is why he's better in solo showdown than duo showdown. Eve is in the A tier for solo showdown and duo showdown. Her hatchlings help her find out where enemies are hiding, so it's really hard to sneak up on her. If an enemy does manage to sneak up on her, her gadget usually gets her out of any kind of trouble she stumbles into. Plus, she can float over water, which comes in handy more in, in showdown than most other game modes. Jenna is in the A tier for solo showdown and in the S tier for duo showdown. Her attacks can go through enemies and it's pretty wide, so she's already better in duo showdown. Plus, if her teammate goes down, then she can use her super or her backstage pass gadget to escape enemies, so it's almost impossible to take her out and her teammate until the smoke is very close. She has decent damage. She has decent range. Janet is just incredibly good overall, and uh, if you play her right, then she's a great option in showdown. Otis is in the C tier for solo showdown and the D tier for duo showdown. His super is great at preventing assassinations, but it can only hit one target at a time, which is why it's less effective in duo showdown. Now, since he was recently buffed quite a bit, he's actually not too bad on his own, especially since his super is even useful from a distance. However, a lot of the times enemies can just fall back and wait until it, it goes away. So it's really only good in close range situations. And finally, we have Sam who could be the best solo showdown brawler in the game. I don't know that I want to put him above Surge. It's really close. He's incredibly good in solo showdown, but I feel pretty good about putting him right here in the A tier for duo showdown. Sam deals tons of damage up close and his super makes it very easy for him to dodge attacks and get close to enemies. His gadget is just ridiculously strong for 1v1s, but you'll hardly ever pull more than one brawler in at a time, which is why it's a little bit less effective in duo showdown. He's got speed. He's got healing. He's got a lot of things that make 
make him very unstoppable, at least in solo showdown. Just not quite as good in duo showdown because he has to face more than one target a lot of the times. And there you have it, the solo showdown tier list. Make sure you guys grab that screenshot. Don't crop my face out if you're going to share it anywhere. Thank you very much. And here is the duo showdown tier list. Once again, showdown's not really competitive. So this is mostly true, like between the range of like 500 and 750 trophies. And even then, any brawler can just hide in a bush or team. But don't team, you're better than that. Once again, this was very much my own personal opinion. So let me know in the comment section below if you disagree with any of the placements. And subscribe for future content. Check out my other channels and watch this awesome YouTube video that I've got going on right here. I know you want to. Use code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. And for now, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by. We will see you in Brawl Stars.